half child that gets in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know they usually laugh about that, but uh, on average, two and a half children yes. and six and a half billion, 6.5 times 10 to the ninth power. Now, the public needs to understand that exponents are highly significant. When you see a nine, that means billion. If you see a six, that means million. Mm -hmm. If you see a 12, that means trillion. Yes. And uh, on the other hand, uh, the evolutionists claim that man's been around, or homo sapiens, so here's a well-respected biology book, uh, Raven and Johnson, page 525, says, quote, the evolutionary journey to modern humans ends with the appearance about 500,000 years ago of homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. Well, whether that was our very closest relative or whether that was us, Nonetheless, there's got to be growth from that point, and 500,000 years at the same rate would yield 2.45 times 10 to the 990th power. Oh, professor, that's an astronomical figure. Well, it's more than the number of electrons in the universe. I the mean, number of electrons is 10 to the 130th power. That's right. And, and so, just so people can see, look at the comparison. Using the Bible's numbers and common sense, we get 6.5 billion, which we've said. And here it is without scientific notation, uh, just a handful of zeros. But how big is the number that you would get? Well, it fills up most of this poster here. Incredible. So I can only conclude that they do not crunch their numbers or they would see, whoa, we can't go to press with this because this is not what we have. We know we have six and a half billion. There's no dispute there. This scenario doesn't get us there. So in a minute, we'll tweak those numbers and, uh, and, and allow them to do some changing well, we'll, and see how we sure, come out. Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll give them squirming room. But, but even more significant, a very fine new publication uh, has said, wait, hold the presses. There's evidence from Spain, according to them, that there is a million-year-old human tooth that has just surfaced uh, or just published recently. And this tooth would confirm that humans were living, humans were living as long ago as a million years ago. A homo sapien, at least, to be humans. Right. And this that's is, an incisor. And this is the New Science Illustrated magazine uh, just recently. As, uh, Someone <clears throat> has a major problem. Yes, yeah, so, and this was only taking half a million. This says, well, you could have done a million. Imagine the posters that would be required to fill up this uh, number that if there was a million Certainly. years of time. So in essence, mathematically, they have too much time on their hands in order to make those scenarios work out. Now, here I think this is an accurate reflection of history. We have creation back sometime before 4000 BC. Correct. And then as all populations tend to do, whether it's bacteria or whether it's humans or rabbits or whatever, they tend to grow exponentially. There's an upturn. And uh, so who knows how much the population was prior to Noah's flood. We could speculate. I've speculated, was it a billion? I put a question mark. I don't know. Because when you research this topic, there's, there's not very much data back very far. Let's face it, in the 1600s, there was no cell phones, no internet, nor any motivation to really care how many people were on the planet. They were making a living and plowing the field and doing, raising the garden and, and shooting hunting. Shooting the game and making your own soap and doing all you could just to get by. Just to survive. But nonetheless, for those centuries where I researched it, <coughs> it comes out a little under one half of one percent growth rate. Now, growth rate, of course, is birth rate minus death rate. And uh, so anyway, we have this big interruption in the human population. At the time of Noah's flood. At the time of Noah's flood, we've mentioned eight survivors. Now, incidentally, here is the population growth formula. P sub O, the original population, if we come from uh, eight humans, and then this is in from a pre-calculus math book at Kilgore College uh, by Carl J. Smith. Uh, well accepted human population growth formula. In fact, there's some problems in there to uh, develop with the students. <coughs> but after the flood, and they came off of the boat, we have every reason historically and scientifically and logically to believe that growth was very rapid. We know the sons are named Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem had uh, five sons, presumably equal number of daughters, maybe more. And we can trace the tribes and the civilizations oh, they produced. Not, not disputed. Uh, Ham had uh, four sons and probably four daughters, reasonable. And Japheth had seven sons and daughters. And so after just one more generation, uh, there was 130 grandchildren. In seven post-flood generations, you'd have over 3,000 offspring. You have growth there that's uh, about f close to 4% growth, which is what we find in third world countries today.
So when we say one half of one percent, it's a very conservative rate Certainly. of growth. Certainly. Worldwide today is about 1.7 percent growth. Uh, the U.S. is pretty close to that as well. Uh, as I said, many third world countries, the growth is actually higher. In more industrialized nations, it's lower and, and even declining in Europe. But <clears throat> crunching the creation numbers but is actually them. within oh, absolutely. that formula. Yes, we can uh, crunch these numbers with rapid early growth. Who knows? Probably leveled off. Probably a little soft tooth looking in here. Uh, but when you have six and a half billion and you started from eight in our case, or maybe two from the evolutionary case, first man and woman, yeah, there's half, growth. Half a million or a million years exactly. ago. There's there, growth. Yes. And the average rate of growth at about a half a percent leads us to see an exponential upturn uh, and we're above six billion today. And this all of that from the creation formula mm -hmm. and from the scientific formula that yes. is accepted uh, universally and so it's totally within that framework, logical and demonstrable. Yes, now if the evolutionist had a chart his beginning is so far back to the left that it becomes a rather silly looking graph, uh, maybe hundreds of feet to our left, and then it would hug this axis and only recently during historical times take an upturn. That's not logical that it didn't take an upturn many times before that. It'd be Non-realistic. Exactly. Well, let's go to the realm of biology and see how it plays into here. Newsweek in January 11th, 1988, the search for Adam and Eve. Now, I wish I could say they were looking for biblical Adam and Eve. They weren't. They were just looking for the first homo sapiens couple. And so they just used biblical names. And trained in molecular biology, they looked at uh, an international assortment of genes and picked up a trail of a single individual woman from whom we are all descended. Now what they were looking at was the mitochondria in the cells of, uh, of people around the world. Because in the mitochondria there's uh, one half of one percent of our DNA. Okay. And you only get it from your mother's line. So it, it's a natural isolation of some genes and she only got it from her mother and she got it from her mother. And so that was what they were studying. So in 88, they tell us, well, <clears throat> we come from one single woman. You know, that reminds me of Genesis 3.20. Oh, absolutely. Adam called his wife's name Eve, for she was the mother of all living. That takes on a new significance. It absolutely she does. She was the mother of all living. Well, in Genesis 9.19 says, the sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and from these the whole earth is populated. We can now verify that uh, genetically through genetic studies. And, uh, you know, for the Bible believer, it's uh, basically ho-hum. I already read the book and I knew that. Yes. But for those that have bought into the evolutionary paradigm, this is dynamite information and not necessarily welcome news. Because their whole line of thinking could be skewed. Yeah, and is skewed. Yes. And verified by their own data and their own statistics. Concerning when mitochondrial Eve lived, this is the $64,000 question. Well, let's just quote from secular sources again, like Newsweek and Science Magazine in 1998. Concerning when mitochondrial Eve lived, using the uh, mutation rates, using the new clock of mutation rates, she would be a mere 6,000 years old. That's incredible. That, that is specifically a match for the chronology of the biblical record. It absolutely is. And totally from secular sources. Yes. Yet, and while that was admitted in the technical literature, it is not broadcast. Uh, it is hidden, essentially, mm -hmm. that we can actually trace the mother of all living back to two, a mere 6,000 years ago. That's right. That's right. And uh, this was as early as 88. Well, of course, research was desired and uh, conducted, beginning to see if there was some connection through the male line. And in 95, that came to the forefront as well. And on another program, we will explore that. Yes, if, we, if we get into that, there won't be time to, <laughs> okay. to finish the thesis. So that brings us back to where we began. Yes. Here we have an entire academic profile for an entire generation of people. The largest number of people ever to occupy space on planet Earth. And we have an embracement of evolutionary theory mandated by the academic community without criticism. But here, we're crunching the numbers right. to run an evaluation. And that theory supposes that planet Earth 
began four and a half or 4.6 billion years ago, and that early living systems evolved.